Now that we've covered the first element of calculus, being differentiation, we can now move on and look at the second, which is integration. Now first of all, before we look at the process of integrating an equation, such as the one shown in the top left hand corner there, we're first going to talk about the reasons why we might want to do integration and what, what it actually tells us about a function. So once again, we've got the function y equals 0.5x cubed minus 4x squared plus 65. And the graph in the bottom right hand corner represents that function. So when x equals 0, that function equals 65. When x equals 4, that function equals 33 and so on. Now when we integrate a function or when we use integration, what we're trying to find is the area underneath the graph. And there's various different reasons why we might want to do that as we'll cover in later tutorials. But essentially all we're doing is we're finding the area under that graph. So if we integrate the function and then we set our limits say between 0 and 5, we would be finding the area under the graph between x equals 0 and x equals 5. If we set different limits, let's say we set the limits of 4 and 7, then we would be finding the area under this graph between the limits of x equals 4, which is here, and x equals 7, which is here. So it's important to remember that the reason why we integrate a function is to find the area underneath the graph or in between the graph and the x-axis or the y equals zero axis. So in the case of what we have on the screen here, that would represent this area here. So let's take a look at the process of integration and then we'll return to this function and we'll do some calculations around this particular function. Now when we integrate a function, there's two different types of integral we can find. One is called the indefinite integral and that represents the general form of the integral. And the other is called the definite integral where limits of x are set. So on the previous example when we were talking about the function, we set limits of x between 4 and 7. Therefore we were finding the area under the graph between the limits of 4 and 7. But in the indefinite integral we don't set those limits, it gives us a general form of the integral. So first of all if we have the indefinite integral, we will know it's the indefinite integral because no limits of x will be set here or here. So in this example we're dealing with the indefinite integral. And if we have a function of the form ax to the b, we would then write dx to show that we're integrating this function with respect to x. Just briefly where this dx comes from is if you recall when we differentiated functions the derivative was of the form dy by dx which represented the gradient. Well when we integrate a function we have the function times dx to represent the calculation of incremental areas. We don't need to concern ourselves too much with this for the time being, but the important thing is to be familiar with the notation. So here we have the notation for an indefinite integral. When we integrate that function, with it being the inverse of differentiation, what we're going to get is a function of the form ax to the b plus 1 all divided by b plus 1. And once again, I'll just explain this and then I'll use an example to clarify what we mean. So if you remember, when we differentiated something, we multiplied down by the power and then we reduced the power by 1. Now with integration being the inverse of that, what we need to do is we need to increase the power by 1 and then divide our coefficient by the new power. So we're doing the reverse of what we did for differentiation. Let's look at an example to clarify this. Let's say we had the integral. We know it's indefinite because no limits of x have been set here or here of 4x cubed dx. Well, the first thing we need to do is to increase the power of x from 3 to 4. We increase the power by 1. And then we divide the original coefficient by the new power. So 4 divided by 4. Now that's exactly the same as just x to the 4. But with it being the indefinite integral, we're not finished yet. We have to include an add k or a plus k for a constant. We don't know the value of that constant. But just so you're familiar with where it comes from, if we were to differentiate a constant, let's say we had y equals k, and then we differentiated that with respect to x, dy by dx, hopefully you recall that the constant disappears. 
When we differentiate a constant, it disappears. Therefore, when we integrate a function for the indefinite integral, we have to include that constant. Now, if we take our final function here, the x to the 4 plus k, differentiating that would take us back to 4x cubed because x to the 4 differentiates to 4x cubed and the constant differentiates to 0. Okay, so it's really important when we've got indefinite integrals, and we know it's indefinite because we don't have values of x here and here, we must include the constant in the final integral. Let's take another example of these. This time, we're going to find the indefinite integral of 3x squared plus 7x cubed plus 2x plus 3 dx. Remember the dx for our notation. So when we integrate each of these terms individually, first of all we have 3x squared. Well we need to raise the power of x to 3. Remember we're treating each term separately, but we raise the power of x here to 3, and then we divide by the new power. So 3 over 3x cubed. We'll simplify this on the next line. Then we have 7x cubed. The power of x needs to raise from 3 to 4, and the 7 needs to divide by the new power. Next we have 2x. Well, 2x is the same as 2x to the 1, if you recall from the previous tutorial on differentiation. Therefore, we're going to have x squared, because we're raising the power by 1, and we're dividing the 2 by the new power. And finally, 3 is going to integrate to 3x, because 3 is essentially the same as 3x to the 0. x to the 0 is 1. Therefore, 3x to the 0, raise the power by 1, gives us x to the 1, which is the same as just x, and then divide by the new power. So I guess just for accuracy, we can include divide by 1 there. But as I mentioned previously, we mustn't forget to add the constant with it being an indefinite integral. I'm just going to simplify what we have there. So 3 over 3 is just 1. So 3 over 3x cubed is just x cubed. 7 over 4 is just 1.75. So we've got 1.75x to the 4. 2 over 2 is just 1. So we'll just have plus x squared. 3 over 1x to the 1 is just 3x. And we remember to include our constant. That there is the indefinite integral of what we began with on the top line. I'm going to do one more example of an indefinite integral and then we'll move on to look at definite integrals. So in this indefinite integral we have 3 over x squared plus 7 over x cubed minus 4 over x to the 4 dx. Because in each of these terms we have x's on the bottom, I'm going to need to rewrite that integral. And I'm going to rewrite it in a way that we've seen before. 3x squared is going to become 3x to the minus 2. So taking the x squared from the bottom to the top means the power goes from being positive to negative. So 3x to the minus 2 is the same as 3 over x squared. We can do exactly the same with the 7 over x cubed, 7x to the minus 3. And we can do exactly the same that becomes 4x to the minus 4 dx. Now we can integrate each of these expressions. Well, if we've got 3x to the minus 2, we need to raise the power by 1. Minus 2 is going to become minus 1. And we need to divide the original coefficient by the new power. We'll tidy this up and simplify this in a moment. Next we have 7x to the minus 3. Well, x to the minus 3 raised by 1 is going to become x to the minus 2 and then we need to divide the original coefficient by the new power and finally we've got 4x to the minus 4 minus 4 raising the power by 1 is going to become minus 3 but we need to divide the 4 by the new power and not forgetting our constant with it being an indefinite integral so let's tidy this up we're going to end up with 3 divided by minus 1 is just minus 3. 
7 divided by minus 2 is minus 3.5. And minus 4 divided by minus 3 is just the same as 4 over 3, or 1.3 recurring. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. So plus 4 over 3, x to the minus 3, plus our constant. Now, if we want to put these x's back on the bottom, we can do that. All we will end up with is we'll end up with minus 3 over x, because x to the minus 1 on the top is the same as x on the bottom. Then we've got minus 3.5 over x squared, because x to the minus 2 on the top is the same as x squared on the bottom. And finally, we've got plus 4 over 3x cubed. Again, 4 over 3x cubed is the same as 4 over 3x to the minus 3. And we're going to include our constant. So that there is the indefinite integral as defined at the top here.